take a look at GCL B6. This is about the introduction of congruence. And to be honest with you, probably up to this point though, you felt like we've been doing congruence for a while. Um, because the terms we've been using ultimately have led us or prepared us for this moment. So let me just back up conceptually for a minute. Um, very early on we looked at this idea of isometric transformations. The whole purpose of identifying the transformations that are isometric is because when you're done with a transformation that's isometric, your angles are congruent, your sides are congruent, the shape is identical, everything about it, it's rigid, uh, it's locked it into place. This of course is an early word that eventually we translated to meaning congruent. We then continued from there, uh, from basic the rotation, the reflection, and the translation, and then we locked in the idea of a sequence of those uh, a sequence of those transformations that you could do two rotations or a reflection and then a rotation. As long as you did a sequence of the isometric ones, you would then guarantee that the 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 final image and the original pre-image would still be congruent or isometric with each other. And this brings us to that idea of congruence then, is the definition of congruence, the new definition of congruence, is that things are congruent if I can map one onto the other using a sequence or single isometric transformation. A beautiful uh, definition, a new one, and so many. Uh, this is many people are trying to learn what that means, and ultimately, this is why we've built the previous objectives to this point. And so, if I had, you know, a triangle here, <laughs> and then a triangle like this. Uh, if I wanted to prove that they were the same, what it might require of me is to do some of those isometric transformations. So maybe I first translate it to this location. So now it looks like this. And then I realize that maybe I need to continue the motion. So a translation's isometric. And then maybe I rotate it uh, negative 90 degrees coming this way. And then maybe it lands right here, let's say, by that rotation. And then finally, I do a reflection to place it onto this one. Then I'm able to establish that these are congruent. A translation, a rotation, and a reflection maps it onto the other shape. Therefore, it would be congruent. The last thing I'd say is what a, how a congruent statement works. If I say um, quadrilateral, you know, or parallelogram A, B, C is congruent to uh, parallelogram D, E, F, G, this is stating a lot of information in a very small line. First of all, it's stating what segments actually are congruent. So AB is congruent to DE. We know that by how it's written. AB is congruent to DE. And so on. BC to EF. CD to FG. Uh, DA to GD. All of those things are true. It's also true about the angle relationships. Angle A would have to be exactly the same as angle D. So the way you write a congruence statement isn't just any naming that you want. You name the first shape and then you name the second one in the corresponding manner. So that when you read this, you're being told about this. The other thing that let me speak about is this congruence symbol. The congruence symbol has two symbol parts to it. And let's take a look at those. You see the two parts? Here they are. This means equal, or in other words, equal measurements. 
This means similar or equal shape. So uh, this is about same shape and this is about same measure. So there are two parts to this uh, relationship and sometimes uh, you can have just the same shape, that's called a similarity. Sometimes you can just be equal. Uh, sometimes you can be equal and have also the same shape exactly. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of uh, examples of this. So looking up close at uh, this kind of relationship of congruence here, here's an example where I have two shapes, and I could easily establish that these are congruent using a nice little transformation of 6 to the right and 3 down. That would map QRST onto UVWX. And because of that, these would be congruent shapes. Here's another example where a rotation about uh, the origin of 270 degrees would map uh, Q, uh, let's see, QRST all the way around onto UVWX. So again, one transformation uh, provides uh, a congruence or a sequence. Here, it says kind of name the transformational sequence that maps one onto the other. Now, in this kind of environment, there's often more than one correct answer. Um, I can see that uh, things have, uh, you know, things are changed between the shapes, so I want to think about, hmm, you know, is this a reflection? Is this a rotation? Uh, is there a translation? One thing I do notice is it seems to me like the orientations of these are reversed. So probably what I would do first is the reflection. One, two, three, four, five here. This is seven up, so seven down. And then once I had this uh, in shape here, this, now I'm looking at these and this is okay. So, um, I would do a reflection over the x-axis first of my quad A, B, C, D. And then I would do a translation of those. Now let's do a quick count here. I'm at negative 6 and I need to get to 5. So that's 11 to the right. And then I need to go down 2 from the looks of it. So if I did a reflection first, now my orientation matches and I can translate it, drop it right on top. And it would work out that A matches with the M, the B matches with P, S, and R. That would be the, the connection there. Over here it looks like a simpler thing, probably just a single translation will map it onto, onto the other. So this is uh, pretty straightforward, just the idea of one or more uh, tra isometric transformations uh, establish a congruence as long as you map one onto the other.